So how to choose a state. First, the, the uh, legal word is domicile. You are actually choosing a domicile. That's a legal word. And that gives that state certain authority over you. Uh, the one that I, I, you always hear about when you say domicile is if you die, when you die, the state gets certain authority over what remains from you. If you have a will, then you've stated your will, and that just takes effect, and the state will just rubber stamp it. If you don't have a will and your kids decide to fight about it, where does that go to court? Who's, whose laws, it doesn't matter where you die, if, you, if you're a California resident and you die in Arizona, who, whose court then decides about your stuff? Well, California's does, if you're a California resident. Domicile means there are certain legal authorities that state has, one of the primary be ones being what happens to your stuff after you die. But there are others, and I'm not a lawyer, and we're not going to go into those things. It's an intent to make this your permanent home. That's a domicile. And it gives the, the, you fall then under the laws of that state. And in certain things, that's a big deal, and, and in most things, it's no big deal at all. Um, so how to choose? How to choose a state? And some of you are facing this question right now. When you live on wheels, you can choose any state you want. Now, you still can to a degree. So my mom is just a really typical average middle class uh, American. Uh, but she managed to put enough money together to own a condo. I grew up in Alaska, and she raised me in Alaska. And so she retired to Florida. You know, typical story. Grew up in a cold place and retired to Florida. Well, so she bought a $100,000 condo in Anchorage, and she had a $100,000 manufactured home on, on, on an acre in Florida. So she had $200,000 in homes in, in, in a different states. I mean, she's not rich. She's just an average middle-class American. Uh, and so she, she could declare either state. So you don't even have to be on wheels. She could choose either state to be her domicile. She lived in Florida, spent most of her time there, and so she chose Florida. And then, well, both those particular states don't have income tax, so she had really nothing to gain. So you can, anyone can choose a state, but as us on wheels, we are totally free to choose a state. You can go ahead and choose a state, and we will choose the state and may never set foot in again. I go to Nevada not very frequently. I'm a Nevada resident. So it has nothing, for us, it doesn't even mean I'll ever be there again. How, how many, how many, well, we're mostly newcomers. How many are, are thinking about choosing South Dakota? How many of you, fair amount, South Dakota's a great state, lots of, lots of advantages to it. Uh, and how many of you became a South Dakota resident and haven't been back there since? Uh, probably a lot. I mean, you don't, South Dakota doesn't have a great deal of appeal, has no appeal in the winter, um, to me at least. And uh, so... It, it has nothing to do with being there. It's a legal decision, and legal things are set in motion when you choose a state. Okay, let me give you uh, four, or I guess three, uh, main criteria for choosing a state. First, the cost of living there. That's your first thought, all of us, I would assume. How much is it going to cost me to become a South Dakota resident versus a California resident, to give you an example of two extreme differences? Well, in, in, and I'm, now I'm going to give you five things to consider when it comes to uh, the cost of a state being your home. So, we're only we're talking about choosing a state based on how much it costs. So the first thing is taxes. California's taxes are sky high. And South Dakota has no state income tax. Their taxes are, are very low, very reasonable on, on everything. So, if, and if you have a pension, uh, that t will almost always be taxed. Most states will tax your pension. So maybe that's really important to you, that you go to a state that doesn't tax your pension. It is to me. I have a pension, and I don't want to pay taxes on it. I've already paid taxes when I got it, when I earned it, and now I don't want to pay taxes again, so I chose Nevada where they have no income taxes. So taxes, but that's not the only thing to consider. That's only part of a bigger picture uh, of what co how much it's going to cost you to live in a state. So another part of that picture is registration of your vehicle. If, uh, let's, this isn't true, well, let's choose uh, Nevada versus Arizona now. If in Nevada, and this happened to me, in Nevada, registering my vehicle meant it was commercial because it was a one-ton van. But in Arizona, they would, they would register it as non-commercial. And, and that difference then was the third factor, insurance. Insurance on a commercial vehicle in Nevada was enormously higher than a non-commercial uh, vehicle in Arizona. So that made so much difference that really tempts me to go to 
to Arizona as a resident, but the tax is in that thought altogether because the income tax, I don't want to pay income tax. So that's three of the things. Taxes, uh, red costs of registration, and a lot of times you're paying this registration every year or every two years, and, and registration in Arizona is incredibly low, incredibly low. They will let you register for five years, and if you pay all the cash in one lump sum for the five years, it goes down. It's already cheap, and it gets super cheap if you pay for the whole five years, and that's what I did. Uh, and the cost of the insurance, and that varies hugely by every state. Nevada is high because of what? Las Vegas. Las Vegas has lots of drunks, <laughs> partiers, and uh, drug users, and so the cost of insurance in Las Vegas is very high, and that causes the whole state of Las Vegas to have very high automobile insurance. So the cost of insurance in Nevada is high, but it's much lower in Arizona. Uh, and, and, so, and South Dakota, I think, is among the very lowest in, uh, in the nation. And so that's a reason. It has almost, it has no huge cities. Consider Texas, which is another great choice. Uh, but they have a bunch of huge cities, and those big cities drive up the costs of insurance. Well, South Dakota is among the cheapest, and that's why so many people choose South Dakota because there are no taxes, the cost of registering your vehicle is very low, the cost of insuring your vehicle is very low, uh, and so the costs in South Dakota are probably the lowest you can choose. Uh, and that's why so many people choose it. You'll see a lot of South Dakota tags among full-timers. Uh, another thing is, is inspections. There's the cost of the inspection, but if your vehicle won't pass it, your vehicle is trashed then. They won't, they won't register your vehicle. It's now a junker. Uh, and so, uh, Inspections are really important. However, beyond the, the cost of the inspection, it's the hassle of the inspection. California, if I become a California resident, um, I have to go back every two years to get a, an inspection to be able to get registered my vehicle. Well, just the traveling is a hassle. Florida, Florida is a great state to become a resident. Uh, and so, but it's so far away. It's 2,500 2, miles. Well, to the... It's not quite that far. It's 2,000 miles to Florida. And if I have to go back, and you don't, and that's one of the great things about Florida, too, is you, they do not have inspections. But if I have to go back every year, every two years, that would really determine my decision. I don't want to drive back to Florida just to get an inspection. So that's an important, so that's number four. Taxes, red, cost of registration, cost of insurance, cost of inspections. South Dakota does not have an inspection. It's a good 1,500 miles from here, I think, isn't it? Like 1,000 miles at least. Well, I don't want to have to drive a thousand miles to get my vehicle inspected. And everything else about great about South Dakota is great, but that would kind of ruin it for me. Uh, and so, you want these are all things you want to consider. And so far, uh, to my mind, South Dakota is the winner because it's you can check off every one of these boxes. And that's why so many people choose it. And finally, you might want to consider very strongly the social network. Health insurance is a biggie. If you can't get health insurance in that state. If you're very low income and they didn't do expanded Medicaid, which I think still exists, but who knows how long it, more it will exist. But right now I think it does. If you can't get expanded Medicaid, you can't get health insurance, uh, then that state isn't a viable, you know, not a good choice for you because you can't get health insurance there, but here in this state you can. So maybe that's a reason you would choose this state over that state. Uh, and again, I'm not going to give you the list of those things. You'll have to go and do that research yourself. I'm teaching you to fish, how to find out, make your own decision. So those are the costs that, and uh, now in one way, California is one of the best in the social network. Uh, the, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting health insurance, getting covered for health insurance and getting covered for um, Medicaid and uh, food stamps and all that, they're the best. And if you need that, if you're so low income that you can't survive, then California is going to be a really good choice for you. You're not paying taxes anyway because you have no money. Uh, so you fall in the cracks, and I hear this a lot. They, you can't get, you can't work, but you can't convince the government that you can't work, so they're, you're not getting any money, and you're, <laughs> you're stuck. And I've talked to a lot of people in that exact situation. Well. Going to California may be your very best choice because they're not just going to kick you to the curb and tell you to die. That's the answer in the United States of America. Kick you to the curb and tell you to die. That's not the answer in California. The answer in California is we'll help you. So those are all factors in uh, which state, the cost of the state, and you have to see the total picture. You can't just look at the one, although taxes usually is the biggest, but you don't have to, maybe not. 
Maybe that's not the biggest factor. Next is politics. Before you choose a state, I would tell you to consider politics, whatever your politics are. If you love guns and you want to be able to carry a gun, don't choose California because they will not let you carry a gun. That would be a bad choice for you. Uh, on the other hand, if you hate guns and you don't want to be around people who carry guns, then California would be a very good choice for you. So whatever your personal preference is, and we are not going to have any kind of a discussion about what's the answer there, but you should consider that. If you believe in, in protecting the environment and taking care of people and not kicking people to the curb and telling them to die, then California is a great choice for you. If you're okay with kicking people to the curb and telling them to die, then there are lots of states that are really good choices for you too. Location. Now, I think this is the one that is much too, given too, much too little consideration, is location. Uh, I think you need to think about where the state is and how close you are. I chose Nevada. Uh, taxes were good, no income tax. Uh, I have owned, in the past, I've always owned older vehicles, so registration was no, be, no big deal. Insurance was a little higher, but it was no big deal. Uh, but the location is what decided. Uh, for one, I'll give you an example. One year, I, I just, oh, it was, they had a four years on their driver's license instead of five. And I just assumed it was five, and the fifth year came around, and I showed somebody my driver's license. They said, you know, this is expired. I just thought it was five years, and I had another year to go. And I looked at it, yeah, I was expired, and driving around with an expired driver's license. But I was only 100 miles from Nevada, because I was, uh, well, I was in California at the time. Uh, and so I just drove up and got my driver's license renewed. Had I been in Florida, I'd be driving uh, 2,500 miles one way to get my driver's license renewed and come back. Florida has a very long driver's license, so that's not a good example because isn't the Florida driver's license like 10 years or it's an, a very long time? Unless you're old and then it becomes shorter because they got so many old people who can't drive. Uh, literally can't drive. And shouldn't be on the road, and so then it becomes shorter at a certain age. Uh, those are all things to consider, uh, but I like location. And now we're going to briefly talk, uh, because that's part of that discussion, uh, about health insurance. And I don't have any health, I don't have any solutions to you for health insurance. Uh, the, the answer to much of the government is to kick your curb, tell you to die. And uh, but Obamacare actually provided a solution, and of course, uh, we're doing every, the current uh, administration is doing everything it can to, to destroy Obamacare and kick you to curb and tell you to die. Uh, so, Obamacare is your answer, and if, you're, if you have too high income, there is no answer. You just have to pay and pay and pay and pay and pay and pay. Um, my income went up uh, too much, and now I can't get Obamacare. And so I just don't have insurance. I'm, turn, I'm, I'm in good health. Uh, I, I turned uh, 65 in two and a half years. And I'm just going to take the risk that I don't have any problems in the next two and a half years when I'll get on Medicaid, Medicare. Uh, and that's going to be true of many of you who are too young, all of us who are too young for Medicare. There is no answer. There's no answer in the United States of America <clears throat> unless you can afford... My insurance, even under the exchange, was going to be six fifty a month, and there was going to be like a seven thousand dollar deductible, and that means I was going to pay. Well, if it was sixty five hundred a month, that would have been uh, what, eight nine thousand dollars for the um, the. I paid for the insurance, and then I paid the first seven. So I was going to pay fifteen thousand dollars of any health problems I had, and then they would pay the rest. Well, you know that's a lot of money fifteen thousand dollars a year. And I, I didn't want to spend that much money, so I'm just taking a chance. And a lot of you are going to end up just taking chances because you can't afford health insurance. So I don't have an answer for health care. That's the bottom line. If you fall in that narrow range of income, currently there is still is Obamacare, and you can get Obamacare, and that's your answer. But the cost of the Obamacare has gone up so much, if you're in that narrow range, you probably can't afford it. So I don't have any answer to you for health insurance. But assuming that you do get health insurance, uh, most health insurance policies do not... Oops can't go, uh, are limited to the state. They're limited to your state. So then location becomes critically important. Because if, you're, if your location for your health insurance is Florida, and you spend all your time on the West Coast, are you going to drive 2,000 miles to get to your doctor every year? You know, you're not going to. And it's very, there are very few options anymore that are nationwide. And if you have one, then you're one of the lucky few. So that's another reason why I chose uh, Nevada. 
because I'm always, I'm always on the West Coast, except for what happened with my mom, and I'm usually within a day's drive of Nevada. I'm within a few hours drive of a doctor in Nevada right now, and that's where I spend my winter. So I chose Nevada for that reason, because it's easy to get back to. It's, I have a doctor in Nevada. I go see him. I drive through Pahrump every year, and I go to my doctor, and it's my home base. And, uh, so that just works out really well for me, having him close to my area of travel. So I think location is very important. If you choose South Dakota and you have to see your doctor in the winter for whatever reason, going to the doctor in the winter is no fun in South Dakota. Factor in the costs, factor in the politics, factor in the location. Uh, most people choose uh, Florida, Texas, or South Dakota. They are, if you look into it, those three work the best. Uh, and I would add Nevada, and some people add Tennessee, some people add Montana and Wyoming. Those are all the big ones of what you should consider for, for health care. And I would concentrate on those. Uh, if you only have Social Security, 36 states do not tax Social Security. So then uh, on, on the cost part of that, that opens up all 36 states because you're not going to pay any taxes, whether there's an income tax or not. They don't tax Social Security. So all these things you have to consider, and you have to do the research. Now, let's move on. There are two things. How do you become a resident? How do you get a driver's license? There are two things you absolutely have to have to be in this country. You have to have a physical address. You must have a physical address. No one, you cannot exist in this country and function without a physical address. You cannot function without a mailing address. How do you get a physical address if you don't set in a state, the state you've chosen, if you never go there. Uh, I went two or three years without going to Nevada. and uh, Or some of you will go years and years and years without ever setting foot in South Dakota. And so how do you get a physical re address there if you never go there? And it's absolutely essential that you get a physical address. Well, uh, that brings us to uh, one of the most complicated parts of this is the uh, Patriot Act and the Real ID Act. Uh, in 9-11, there were 19 terrorists got on board airplanes, and they between them they had 35 different legal, perfectly legal state forms of ID. They were they were making their way through the cracks in the system, and got on board those airplanes. And so the government feds said, "We've got to find a way to fill in these cracks so this doesn't happen again." Nobody wants that to happen again. I think we're all agreed on that. And part of it is not letting those people on the plane. Uh, who, who didn't belong here. And so their answer was, we will devise the Real ID Act, and that will force the states to be careful about who they give legal ID to. So you can't just jump on an airplane if no one has a clue who you are or where you've come from. And the argument, counter-argument is, well, it wouldn't have stopped those guys, and maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't have. It certainly would have slowed them down. Just like it's slowing you and I down, it was, it's slowing them down. And we've got caught up in that same net, the net of people who don't have a home, who don't have a physical address, and don't belong in a... In, now, according to the federal government, most people, we don't belong here because we don't live in houses. Uh, and so the people who don't belong here have been caught up in this same net, and they're saying, we are going to know where you are and find you is basically what they're saying, so you can't blow up buildings. Now, hopefully no one here is going to blow up a building, and I'm almost certain no one is. But we get caught up in that net. So the Real ID Act said to all the states, if you don't follow the rules we're laying out uh, in, the, in regards to giving out state ID, in particular uh, driver's licenses, your people will not be able to go, whoever has your driver's license cannot use it to get on federal facilities. And... Uh, that's the bottom line. If, if I pulled out my, my Nevada driver's license, it says right at the top, not for federal official use. The driver's license in my pocket will, in a few years, not yet, will not allow me to get on an airplane. I show them this driver's license, they'll say you can't get on. You will try to get into a federal airport, which is all the airports. Uh, they will say uh, you cannot come on board into this airport, not with this driver's license. I can show them my passport. That proves my identity. I'm an American citizen, and that proves it. And I'm, like any American, not just a terrorist who's found a way through the cracks. Uh, so that's what they're doing. They're holding driver's licenses hostage. 
a bunch of the states have fought the real ID, ID Act that you were overreaching and, and you don't have the right to do this, and but they're all going to give in because no politician wants to say to his, um, his constituents, I'm sorry, but your driver's license won't get you on an airplane anymore. Uh, now, the Real ID Act ex lays out exactly what you have to do. Well, each state has some variation, which is not good either, because you have to look up every state. Tell us exactly what they will find acceptable. And they have a menu, and each state chooses what they will do. So, uh, you have to. how do you become a resident of the state after you've chosen it? You get a driver's license. How do you get a driver's license? You're going to have to go. Here's, I'm going to teach you how to fish now. I'm not going to give you a fish. You go to the internet. Why, well, it's a great thing, isn't it? Hmm. And you do a Google search on the state. Uh, I'm going to give you Nevada as an example. You go to, you say, you type in Nevada driver's license requirements. That simple. Just type those words in, and you'll find a page uh, from Nevada.gov that says, this is exactly what you have to do to get a driver's license in the state of Nevada. And then that's what you have to do. And now there's a, a pretty strong similarity between all the states. Uh, they all require a document proving you live there. That's what the bottom line is. You have to bring in and hand them this document that proves that you live where you say you live. Uh, they will also ask you for proof of being a U.S. citizen, and that will usually mean another, another two, at least two pieces of uh, picture ID. Uh, it will often mean bringing in a Social Security card. Everyone here should have a Social Security card, a, birth, your, a legal birth certificate that everyone will accept, and a passport with you at all times. That's just the way we live. Uh, there, and we have to do it to prevent the terrorists, and we don't like it, and we're all going to grumble about it, and rightfully so. But that's the way the world we live in, and you can grumble about it, or or you can fall in the cracks. Uh, and so, just let's just all comply. Get your driver's license, get this, uh, get your passport, carry your social security card. They'll ask you for these things. They'll have a list, and some of them for uh, proving your citizenship, and and they will um, they'll tell you what you have to bring in. Now, here's the way it works. Usually, it's a rental receipt. They will require a rental receipt, a bill. A utility bill will do it, uh, or a bank bill, a, a bank statement with that address. If I, to, if I tell them I am at 123 Elm, I have to bring in a, a bank statement, a, a rental agreement, a, uh, all kinds of things they will accept. There's a long list of what they will accept, and it has to have my name on it. It has to have a date, a current date on it, and it has to have uh, 123 Elm Street. So people will say, well, I'll just go open a bank account and I'll name it 123 Elm Street. That won't do it. Uh, you have to take in the statement with your name that was sent to you at 123 Elm Street, okay? Now, if you don't live at 123 Elm Street, how are you going to get that piece of paper in the mail? You're going to go to 123 Elm Street and rifle through their mail every day waiting for your bank statement? No, you actually got to live there. And how are you going to do that? Because we don't live there. I don't live at 123 Elm Street. The address that's on my, I have a, a physical address on my driver's license, and I don't live there. That's why I'm not federally compliant. I can't bring in a piece of paper. Uh, now, the whole Real ID Act is being phased in, which makes it very confusing. And so I, it hasn't all started yet. My driver's license will still get me on an airplane, and I have my passport. Uh, but starting soon... I think this year, maybe, or next year, uh, you, it will not. I can no longer get on an airplane with this driver's license. So, uh, here's the easiest thing to do. Carolyn just became a Nevada. Uh, I hope she'd come, but she had other things she had to do. Just she be, And she has a video, and this is a good video for you to go watch at Carolyn's RV Life. Uh, how I became a Nevada resident in one day. And uh, this is exactly what she did, and this will work in Nevada. Uh, it will work uh, in nearly every place. She... Well, I told her, but she went and looked anyway. Here's what she did. She went to Pahrump, Nevada, where I'm a resident. She went to uh, JB Mailroom, where I have might do my mail. Wonderful lady named Marianne. She loves Marianne. I love Marianne. You will love Marianne. She signed up. I think it's $120 a year. She is a mail forwarder. You have to have two things. You have to have, to have a physical address. You have to have a, uh, a mailing address. You must have those two things in this country. And they... They can be the same thing, but they because you don't live there, they won't be. You will have a P.O. box. You will have a B, uh, 
there are lots of ways we'll talk about mailing addresses in a little bit. So first off, she signed up with JB Mailroom as a mail forwarder. That's what you want. You want to get a mail forwarder, and I'll tell you about that in just a minute. And then she went uh, to the RV park with that address. Uh, the mail forwarder will give you an address. My address in Pahrump is P.O. Box 6560, Pahrump, Nevada, 89041. So that is my mailing address in Pahrump. So she then, and that isn't hers, but she has she got one from Marianne. She went for she gave her 120 dollars. Marianne gave her a, a legal address where she can get mail. Ma Marianne will pick up her mail every day. She will hold it for her. This is what a mail forwarder does. Then Carolyn will tell her, "I am in Quartzsite now. Mail, ma send all my mail here to Quartzsite, and keep holding it and tell you where I'll be next." She'll mail it to her, and Carolyn will get her mail that way. Uh, and so then Carolyn then went to an RV park in town, paid three hundred dollars, got a rent receipt in her hand that said that said Carolyn Higgins, uh, and at uh, let's say the RV park was uh, was uh, Gold Nugget Gold Nugget RV Park Space One Hundred Nine. That is now her physical address. She lives at uh, Space Thirty Nine, uh, whatever I just said, Gold, Gold Nugget. Nugget RV, RV Park, Park Prop, Nevada, 89060. Uh, that's her now, and she has both. In, in one afternoon, she went to see Marianne. She went to the RV Park. She now has two legal addresses. She has a legal, physical residence, and she has a mailing address. Then, uh, and I haven't watched the video, I'm assuming she then went to register. She took the rent receipt. She's got now this precious piece of paper she bought for $300. I'm sure, I haven't watched that video, but I'm sure she never spent a night in the RV park, and I won't either. I'm not fond of RV parks. I'll pay the $300, but they'd have to pay me to, to, to go to the RV park. Uh, and so uh, she took the precious piece of paper that says she's a Nevada resident. She went. She signed up to become a, um, a registered voter, and then she uh, has another piece of paper. She, you have to almost have to always have to bring in two pieces of paper, and these two will do it. A rent receipt, and you're a registered voter. As far as now the state of Nevada is concerned, you've met, and the federal government, you've met all the requirements. She then went to the DMV and stood all day. I mean, I'm sure she was there all day. The DMV in, in Pahrump is awful. Um, I, I've been in there for three or four hours at a time to do something. Uh, and she was there all day, and finally she got up there, and she gave her these pieces of ID, and they she paid him some money, and it wasn't too bad, I don't believe. Uh, and um, she's now... In one day, a legal resident of uh, Nevada. She has a legal uh, address, and from now on, she will use that one. She just moved and forgot to tell them, if anyone asks, and no one will ever ask. She has a place where her mail goes, and some of you will say, well, I don't, uh, I don't get any mail, so I don't need a mail forwarder. Okay, well, the state will require a legal mailing address. Why? Because they are going to send you your registration documents, they're going to send you your title. Where is that going to go if you don't have, you say you don't need a mail forwarder or any kind of an address? It has to go somewhere. And so it absolutely has to. And not only that, but before you can do any of this, you have to have insurance on your vehicle to insure it. And every insurance agency in the world is going to say, where do you park, where do you garage your vehicle? So you have to say, uh, Gold Nugget uh, RV Park, Space 39, Pahrump, Nevada, 89060. You have to say that. They won't give you insurance if you don't. And then they'll say, where can we send you your, uh, uh, Notice. your notices and your cards, you know, your insurance cards? If you don't do it, they're not, if you don't have an answer, they're not going to give you insurance. You won't be able to register your vehicle. I get very little mail, but I get mail. And uh, for $120 a year, it's well worth it to have a, an address. Um, now, of course, if, if you have family, a lot of you have family, and if you have family who will do it for you, they could become your mail forwarder. You still have a mail forwarder, it's just free because it's family. Here's what I found in family and friends. After a year or two, they get tired of getting your mail and packaging it up and sending it to you and paying for your mail to get to you. And they say, you know, this has become kind of a hassle. And you say, I'm sorry, it really has become kind of a hassle for you. Let's just not do it anymore. But if you have family and friends that that won't happen and you want to wait, then family and friends is a very viable uh, solution and opportunity. And you can save the $120 a year. To me, it's worth $120 a year. And show you get your driver's license. They'll give you your driver's license. Uh, you'll have your insurance in your hand already. 
Uh, and you you're now a Nevada resident. And it was pretty painless. The most painful thing, well, paying $300 isn't painless, but you're only going to do it once. I don't believe you have to do it again next year. I think it once, once you start the renewal process, and I don't know because I haven't done it yet, but I think once you start the renewal process, you don't do it ever again. Um, once you've got a real ID compliant driver's license, you'll know if your real ID dri license, if your, I if your driver's license is compliant, it will have a yellow star and it might actually say something about this works on federal buildings. I don't know what the wording will be. But there will be a yellow star. You get a gold star because you're a good citizen. You've proven you live here and you work here and you are good productive citizens and uh, the 1% are getting really rich off you. So um, that's how you get a driver's license and that's how you become a resident. Okay, we'll, now we're going to talk about some of the options for that. That's how it's going to work in nearly all the states. And you will do your Google search on the state you're interested in and you will say Tennessee driver's license requirements. Now we'll talk about a little bit of other states. South Dakota makes it by far the easiest of all the states to do this. Uh, and now this is, this is all changing fast. And next year, this, everything I'm telling you could be completely wrong. As of right now, uh, some of you who have South Dakota, you can correct me, uh, it's two nights in a motel. That's all they ask. One night in a motel, you bring in that receipt, a lot cheaper than $300. And uh, what they ask is that you sign a document that says you are a full-time RVer, but you intend to be a South Dakota resident when you stop being a full-time RVer. So they make it the cheapest and the easiest. They have many, many outstanding mail forwarders. I mean, people who are outstanding mail forwarders. I mean, they will take, they will go down and get your. They'll go down to the DMV and do a lot of it for you. I mean, they, you, I think they expect you to pay a little bit for it, but a, a really outstanding mail forwarders in South Dakota, which is why so many people choose it. Uh, so, and I believe that Texas, with the escapees, makes it nearly as easy. That the escapees, and they're in Livingston, right? Any, anybody? Uh, they're in Livingston. Is that the name of the town? They have, they have worked out a deal with the state of Livingston and the county, and, and they're through them to the state. That I mean, it's just really easy. Isn't it? in, in the, if you're an escapee, to get your driver's license, and I don't think you have, it's much, much easier. I've not done it, and I'm not going to tell you this is, I'm giving you, I'm teaching you to fish, not giving you a fish. Um, you'll have to do, go and do your research, but I think the escapees make it especially easy in Texas. I don't believe Florida is easy at all. Um, my parents are both in Florida, and I remember when they had to get a, a how they were grumbling about having in Florida, they had to uh, go through all these steps and bring in all these documents. Of course, they lived there. They had a house. They owned it. They had the title. They had bills and all that. So it was easy. But they had to jump through the hoops, and they didn't like the hoops. In Florida, St. Brendan's Isle is one of the very best. They, they, they revolve mostly around voters because voters need an address. They're in international travels a lot and all that. So, uh, But they are a very, very good one. Uh, boy, in South and 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 escapees are both in uh, now. They're both in all three states. The escapees are in all three states, right? They're in South Dakota. Another option is homeless shelters in Arizona. I know for a fact that uh, you can use. I have friends who have used homeless shelters here in the state of Arizona to become residents. Uh, I think I'm certain in some states it's a state law that you do not have to have an address to get. Uh, a driver's license. They saw that they see that as uh, the, mainly due to the ACLU, uh, who has they have said that no one can be discriminated against if you qualify to drivers a driver's license just because you don't have an address you can still get one. I believe California is exactly that way. So there again, that's that's the kind of details you're going to have to ferret out for yourself. I can't tell you which states are like that. You're going to have to do your research. But yes, homeless shelters work really well for that and they are designed to to you know that's part of the the vicious cycle of being truly homeless uh you don't have an address you don't you can't get a driver's license how can you get a job and it just becomes this vicious cycle and to break that many states are letting homeless shelters work working with homeless shelters to get people's driver's licenses and id so really look into that if of course you got to declare yourself as homeless and he also mentioned supporting that homeless shelter and boy i would 100 percent agree with that those people are saints i'll tell you that arizona is really good about that that's one of the really really good things about arizona cottonwood has just this outstanding flagstaff also outstanding uh, cottonwood arizona 
uh, homeless system, and you go in there, and they're going to work with you to become get get your driver's license. So okay, my mail forwarder's got my mail, and I'm driving around everywhere. How am I going to get my mail? Uh, the big thing would be of a lot of well, a lot of what most people will use is general delivery uh, because it's everywhere and it's free, and it works pretty well. It, it works pretty well. Uh, so you can call your um, and I don't do much general delivery. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, but I know a lot of people do and love it, and so I'm, I'm encouraging you to do it yourself and you make your own decision. And so you tell your mail forwarder, I'm going to be, I'm traveling to uh, Moab, Utah. I'm going to be there in a week. Send my mail to general delivery, and then you have to give out a physical address that it's going to. Gen Bob Wells, general delivery, uh, 1234 Ames, uh, Elm Street, uh, Moab, Utah, and zip. And so you have to have the right address. And if it's a larger city and there are multiple post offices, usually only one will accept uh, uh, general delivery. So you have to have that address, that physical address at that mail, that post office branch. Uh, so just call ahead or Google it and uh, say, who does, your, who does your general delivery in this town? Find out, and then she will mail it to you. Your mail will be waiting for you when you get there. What I will generally do is try and find, and just Google it, and try and find a UPS store. They're usually five bucks and up, so they're kind of expensive. I will always try then to find a uh, mom and pop. Uh, and, and most small towns have a, a store in them. They just set up boxes, and then they can receive mail for anyone. And uh, nearly every town of any size, any size I mean five to 10,000, We'll usually have a mom and pop that will receive mail and do the Google search. And sometimes you've got to go through different uh, permutations of, of what kind of Google search, mail delivery service, mail forwarding, um, other things. It can, be, it can be a little tricky. And find the one and call them and say, I'm going to be in your town next week. Can, will you receive mail for me? My name is Bob Wells. And they'll say, yes, we'll hold it for you. If uh, we'll, It'll be $2, $4, $5, whatever it'll be. It's usually much cheaper than UPS. Uh, I've never had a problem getting mail on the road, and and I have I I do all my ordering from Amazon, and they keep all your old mailing addresses, uh, and you know they keep the list. You just go and choose it, and so I have hundreds, and and so if I go to Moab, it's there. It's in my, uh, it's specifically Moab or Jackson or you know, almost anywhere, here in here. In, a quartzite, tiny little town. Quiet Times is your mail delivery. Uh, so once you know Quiet Times, you put it in your Amazon box, and it's always there. When I, right now, I could click on that, and my mail would go, my Amazon orders would go right to Quiet Times. Are we done? Yes. Tried to cover it all. I'm, I hope it. I hope it wasn't too mean to you. Okay, big topic. <laughs>